Today, obviously, the reason why that guy made the, uh, the post that he did is because Microsoft, which, keep in mind, is now owning Blizzard Activision, Activision Blizzard, excuse me, uh, and Xbox employees. Blizzard president, Mike Ybarra, leaves the company. He is no longer going to be the head of Blizzard. That's fucking huge. And Adam Adham, correct me if I'm wrong, is one of the OGs of Blizzard. He is one of the original founding members of Blizzard, and he is now gone from the company. Sad, yes, that's right. And so this is a very, very, very big deal. Now, oftentimes, this is what happens whenever a merger happens, is you have a shakeup of the, uh, uh, it, it, well, I mean, I was going to say ruling class, and I was like, oh, that's not really the right way to say it. But it actually kind of is, in a way, because this is what used to happen whenever people would take over other countries, is they wouldn't kill off all of the random people. Well, to be fair, they did kill off some of them. But um, they would also kill off a lot of the of the royalty. They would get rid of them because they don't want to have anybody thinking that it's the old leadership. Th this is this is a new company. They're owned by Microsoft now, and you're not going to be listening to the same people you were listening to. And that's just what happens. Yeah, getting rid of the old guard exactly, and and that's what happens. So I think this is extremely common. It happens with I would say probably most companies whenever they have a big acquisition like this. Uh, there are like. I actually, in a way, didn't expect this to happen. I didn't. And the reason why is that I think that at least, and maybe because it's a much more comprehensive uh, buyout by Microsoft versus a smaller company like uh, 343 Studios that makes Halo. Because I've always viewed like, you know, Xbox and Phil Spencer's stance, at least publicly, is that we just want you to make us money. We don't care what you do. We don't care who you're doing it with. Just make us money and that's it. So I find it, I do find it surprising that this happened. But also, um, you know, this is a huge acquisition. And uh, how much is Bethesda worth as a company? I, I, I don't know. Does anybody know offhand? One dollar? Oh, I don't know about that. Eight billion, right? Eight, seven, eight billion dollars, right? Okay, so it's a very big company, right? And so, uh, but it's not 70 billion. So with these smaller studios that pretty much retain their leadership, Activision Blizzard is almost at like a partnership level with Microsoft. So of course they're gonna probably try and do that. So I understand it, but at the same time, I didn't expect it. But it's also not surprising. It's like, it was a 60-40 thing. I didn't think it would happen, but now that it is happening, it's like, yeah, okay, sure. So we got a guy, uh, this is a dude, he got laid off from Blizzard customer service. Just wanted to say, despite what y'all thought of us, it's been a pleasure helping those who I could. So here's the reality. Starry, I 25-year-old. I'm a 36-year-old neckbeard. Jesus Christ. This reminded me that Throne of Thunder... Has it really already been 11... Oh my God, it's been 11... Bro, well, I remember... Throne of Thunder was 11 years ago? I feel like it was like 5 years ago. No, it was like 7. It was like 7 years ago. Like, what? What? How's it, how's it that far away? Oh my god. I was going hardcore on Pandaria? Yeah, dude, I was. I was going hard as a motherfucker, man. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like, what the fuck? I remember when Asmon caught this, but it was because Undead uh, Slang Gear from Wrath of the Lich King event. It caused such an uproar in the WoW community. It was funny as fuck. I actually heard, and I know this guy probably can't confirm this, but I heard from an anonymous source um, that the fact that the GM gave me my stuff back caused, like, tens of thousands of dollars of tickets of other people trying to send in tickets to get their stuff back. And then they had to, like, make some sort of, like, a fucking announcement. Don't ever give him anything ever again. Never give him anything. Because if, if he gets something, then everybody else is going to want it. And suddenly, now everybody's going to be getting tickets. So, yes, yeah, the biggest mistake it was. But it was great content, to be fair. And so, yeah, over the years, I grew more jaded as the policies changed. Uh, I still overall enjoyed my job. Well, I mean, look. Uh, I mean, this is what Pirate Software said. This is what a lot of people said working at Blizzard is that the company's policies for, uh, um, what's the word for it, uh, for, like, efficiency were not good. Basically, the people that designed the efficiency policies were bad. They didn't know what they were doing. 
And because of that, it ruined customer service. Because it's easy to say, like, there are GMs that I got that were garbage, but there are also GMs that I got that were good. And so they fire CS whenever they have almost no CS. Well, it's because they can have uh, AI or bots do it. Uh, that's really the reason why. And so performance metrics. Well, here's really what the problem is. So um, if you have a performance metric, the issue with that is that every single ticket is not the same. So uh, I I'm going to use an example with like whenever I worked at the IRS. So you guys can assume that like whenever I file my taxes, it's this thick. Okay. I have a lot of things to file with my taxes. So if I get that tax document, I have to go through that and figure out what's going on, right? I have to go through the pages, etc. But, you know, compare that to somebody who is like a McDonald's employee or somebody who just simply works a regular job and doesn't donate to charity or doesn't do, uh, you know, they don't own any businesses. They don't have any uh, business expenses. They just simply drive to work and go back home. That's it. Right. And so that is, um, you know, it, it's like two or three pages. Right. And so that's very simple. So guess what happens? People end up not giving certain things the amount of uh, credibility and the amount of attention that they deserve because those people don't want to lose the game of keeping their job. And so this is what the problem is, right? W-2 taxes take 10 minutes, right? Yeah. But like, if, if you have like, like mine were really complicated for like 10 different reasons, right? And like, if you have crypto, then it's like, oh my God, it's way more, right? Because like, they're looking at that way more now, at least according to like what my accounting firm told me. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. What I'm saying is that whenever you create a system that gives you points and effectively gamifies a job, you have people that try to beat the game and not do their job. So what happens is that you have GMs that are trying to not have an interaction with a player because having an interaction with a player will take longer. So because they're being graded on how fast can they do a ticket, it's not in their best interest to give you a uh, a comprehensive experience, a comprehensive customer service experience. And is that really their fault? I mean, like, yes and no, right? It's like, it's like they are a cog in the machine and fundamentally they didn't make the machine. They're just simply there. And some of them, the machine is put on them. They worked there originally, they were doing great work. This gets changed and now they have to do things differently or they risk losing their job. So whenever you see a person like that, because the truth is that the guy who gave me my blessed battle gear of, the, of, of undead slang, he was right. He should have given me that back because I had it on my account. And if I delete something on my account and they have record that I had it, I should be able to get it back. Logically, right? Like, that's what's fair. I mean, that's why you have a, uh, that's why you have item restoration, naturally. So the guy, and this is what's so fucked up about it, right? You deleted it. I did delete it. But we have item restoration in the game. That's a service that GMs provide naturally right so if it's a service that gms provide then why can't i receive this service for an item that i had naturally right and so the gm that helped me fucking like like went above and beyond he did the thing that everybody tells a story 10 years from now fuck it's five years already i'm telling a story and I'll be telling it probably in five years as well. He did the thing that makes people remember big dick GMs 10 years after they don't play the game anymore. He did the thing right then. And I bet he got in trouble for it. And how do we fix this? How do you fix this? Do you want to know the real, the real way to fix it? So the real way to fix it is to have people that are in management positions that are competent enough in the job that their employees do how much of you how many of you guys have had a problem with an employee or sorry with it with a, a, a boss because the boss didn't understand your job the boss is telling you to do something you're explaining to them that it's not true or it doesn't work me right we've all had this everybody's had this so whenever everybody has had this experience and and this is also not even the boss's fault by the way because oftentimes they get promoted to this position by somebody else that's not even them. 
Like, they should never have been there in the first place. They're, it's like the Peter Principle, where people keep getting promoted until they become incompetent, and that's why they stop getting promoted, so you always have incompetent managers, right? And, and so you, you have this. Like it's, it's a defined thing. There's a term for it. So that that's number one, right? You have to have leadership that understands, respects, and fully has a comprehensive understanding of the process that their employees go through. Because if the employer, or sorry, the, the manager doesn't have an understanding of the process, they can never reverse engineer who's doing what wrong. And I'll give you an example that a lot of you guys would probably be able to, uh, to resonate with. So whenever you're playing WoW in a raid, right? Have you ever been like, have you ever had like a raid leader that knows their shit so well that they can figure out who exactly is fucking up and how by just looking at the logs? We've all had this, right? Yeah, and it's fucking amazing, isn't it? I used to try to do that myself, right? And uh, that person is what's going to cause you to... Guess Wiki? Yep, that's right. No frog, no prog. And uh, the real ones remember. And so anyway, uh, this kind of stuff really mattered a lot. And for these kinds of people, they added so much value because of their knowledge and skill. But have you ever had a raid leader who didn't fucking know any of that stuff and just yelled at people and got mad at people for things they didn't even do? Yes, right? It makes them miserable. So so you, we've all had an experience that, that's similar to this. Even if we haven't had this at a job, we all know kind of what this experience is, is, is sort of like, right? And so whenever you have a person who is in a position of authority who doesn't understand what the people's job is, then they're a fucking idiot, and they're going to ruin everything, uh, basically. And then the second thing is that a lot of these companies employ efficiency experts, and the efficiency experts don't have a comprehensive understanding of how a job is done. And so the problem with that is that they look at something analytically from a series of numbers, the Bobs, right? Exactly. It was my dad. And uh, my dad did this because, like, he, he would talk to me about it all the time. That's why I have the, the viewpoint on it that I do. Because, like, he's told me about this, like, many, many times over many, many years. And so whenever you have somebody who designs an efficiency process and they don't do it with the insight of understanding the process itself, they just look at the numbers in an abstract, which is what these people do. They say each ticket on average should take six minutes, so every ticket should take six minutes. But that's not the way that it works. And so also, whenever you create a numerical grading system for performance, and then everybody is aware of that system at all times, people don't try to perform at their job, they try to perform at the system. I'm going to give you another great analogy for this. Parsing and WoW. People are trying to parse on the performance reports instead of actually doing their job. And that's what happens. That's it. They're parsing. They're playing the KPI game. Yes, KPI, key performance indicators. And so they're, they're hitting the points that the, uh, th that the management wants them to hit. Right? And so that's why CS is bad. Are there bad customer service representatives? Absolutely. Are there customer service representatives that don't try as, much, as hard as they should? Absolutely. Are there people who are lazy? Absolutely. Are there people who are incompetent? Absolutely. But I think that there would be a lot less of those people and the people that remained, it would be easier to remove them and replace them with people that were because a, I, I believe, right? This is just something I believe. I think that if you have a positive, efficient, and just successful workforce, that in itself is inspiring. Like, I remember, for example, whenever we were like really... Uh, really like fucking hard and like, you know, just like down bad. Like everybody was like super busy whenever I worked at the IRS. Um, we actually had one, of, it wasn't our manager, okay? It was the other manager. Uh, came over and he actually came out because he used to work at our job. And he started working and doing the stuff, the exact same shit that we did. So we would finish in time. And like at that day, everybody was working. Nobody was on their phone. Nobody was complaining because he was working along with everybody else. And I think that really like bad work environments and toxic work environments create bad employees. Now, bad employees exist, but let's say you have like a natural existence of 10 and a good work environment will create five and a bad work environment will create 20. 
That's basically what happens. So that's why CS is garbage at Blizzard. There it is. That's what causes it. And so uh, they are canceling the entire Blizzard survival game. Like, the, the, the total massive Blizzard survival game is getting canceled. It's done. It's finished. Years down the drain. Not years. Six years. Six years down the drain. Pissed away. Do you want to know what my opinion is about that? My opinion is that I think that if we had seen the game and we had played it, we would have understood why it got cancelled. Most of the products that Blizzard has made recently have been bad products. Dragonflight has a lot of good gameplay, but it lacks the edge and the texture that WoW used to have. The story is for uh, safe modern pussies, and I think that it's lost the attention of a lot of people like me. And I think that also, here's the worst part. WoW is doing the best. Overwatch... Overwatch did something that so few games ever accomplish. It killed people's hope for the future of the game. Because everybody who hates WoW can always imagine a world where it's better. But Overwatch literally killed any hope for a future for this game. Made a lot of 3D porn. Yeah, it probably made more money through 3D porn than the actual game. But the point is that... Obviously, it's... Uh, you know, it, nobody gives a shit about the game, right? It's a dead game. It's not even a dead game. It's just that it's... Uh, it, it's no longer going to grow. It's not going to get any bigger. It, it's just like, that's it is what it is, right? Unless they make Overwatch 3. Or some sort of, like, other big, big difference. And so, uh, basically, that's what happened. It peaked. And so, there's that. Diablo 4. Let's look at Diablo 4. Um, let's look at the subreddit. The most popular comment on Diablo 4. The dev team needs to be replaced. So you even have the Reddit that's talking about how the dev team needs to be replaced. And then the next day, the next day... Be careful what you wish for. And let me guess, all the people at the top are getting raises. Well, no, uh, Mike Ybarra is gone. And so not all the people, but um, I don't know, is Rod Ferguson there? Uh, is, is David Shelley there? I, I don't know. Uh, should they be there? I don't know what their role is. I'm not sure. So, yeah, it's hard to say. Layoff sucks. Sorry to those impacted. If I'm being brutally honest, though, I secretly hope this acts the Diablo Season 1 and Season 2, Season 3 team. I'm sorry, and I hope they were laid off for two contradictory statements. Well, I don't really think so. Like, you can feel bad for... Like, for example, I feel bad for people who, you know, who end up ruining their lives. Like, you know, somebody gets drunk, they're driving, they hit somebody. Maybe they don't kill them, but they just injure them and they go to jail for 20 years. I feel bad for that person because they made a stupid decision that's going to ruin their life. Like, I can feel bad for them on an empathetic level, but I'm glad they're in jail. Fuck them. That's right. So, yeah, I understand. No, that, I think that that's normal, right? I mean, yeah, sure. I can put myself in their shoes and understand how they feel. Of course. But I also can put them in jail. That's what we got to do. You know? Imagine not being pro-drunk driving. That's going to be uh, whenever Hunter Biden runs for president in 20 years. His campaign slogan is going to be uh, crack down on crime. And uh, he's going to be pro-drunk driving. He wants to get rid of it as a crime. That way we don't have to arrest people for it anymore. Laugh all you want, but one day it'll be true. <laughs> yeah, undead president, exactly. And so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, with our luck, it axes, <laughs> axes the season two team. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I can't imagine how this is particularly encouraging for the growth and development of Diablo 4 going forward. Um, and what was it the day before yesterday? Was that, was that encouraging? Layoffs will continue until morale improves. This is not surprising. Uh, yep, any merger and acquisition will always have some redundancy that leads uh, to layoff. That's usually the way it goes, absolutely. Wizard has proven to have too many useless positions in the company. This is not necessarily a bad thing. 
Uh, it's hard to know why people got fired, and uh, I think that the truth is that the market for survival games is so agile that I don't really see how Blizzard can compete in it. Like, look at something like Pow World. Pow World can come out so quickly, twice as fast as Blizzard's game comes out. They talk about patch notes that add raid bosses. And people love the game. So how is it that Blizzard can compete with that? And, and that's really the question, right? How can Blizzard possibly compete with that? Look at Enshrouded. In Shrouded, you can dig holes. You can use magic. You can use a bow and arrow. You can use a weapon. Like, I played the game for like an hour, and I thought it was fucking amazing. So whenever I go, and, and look at, uh, I mean, like, obviously, you know, we're talking about two survival games, but like, look at, look at World of Warcraft versus Final Fantasy. Look at how many things Final Fantasy was able to add, and Final Fantasy is also a very big game. Let's make a better example. That's the worst example I can make. Here's a better example. Path of Exile. I mean, come on. It is what it is, right, guys? It is what it is. And so, GGG equals Giga Chat, Giga Chat, Giga Chat. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, man. And uh, PoE2 this year. Well, I mean, we'll see if it comes out this year, but, uh, you know, we'll be able to play it this year. Uh, and, and there it is. And so, uh, yeah, no one's paid to make good games. Well, the point is that you should not be surprised. Like, we can argue and debate on whether the people that got fired should have been fired. The answer, though, that everybody, I think we all know, is that none of us really know the answer to who really should have been fired or not, right? Like, we don't know if Mike Yabara should have left. We don't know if Adam Adham should have left. We don't know if the other people would should have left. We really don't know that. But what here's what I do know. I know that this is a company that has had over 10 years of garbage product offerings with one light at the end of the tunnel with Overwatch 1 that they did their best to stomp out and they did so very successfully with Overwatch 2. So you look at a company that has again a consumer product that they're going to market with for 10 years and failing continuously over and over and over. They should be lucky and happy that it wasn't more people. That's what I think. Hearthstone didn't fail. My understanding is that Hearthstone is in a very bad position. Am I out of touch? It's on life support. It's difficult to say. Can I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. I'll look it up on Google Trends. All right. So, basically, if you look right here. I would say that Diablo 4 had, like, this massive spike. Isn't this incredible? I didn't realize that the, uh, the release of Diablo 4 was so big. And so, if you look at it, especially over the past, like, 2004, you'll see that a lot of these games, right? You look at, for example, the Yellow, which is Overwatch. Overwatch has gone down substantially over the years. And I would also argue that the, the majority of online discourse about Overwatch right now is about how bad the game is, and not really about the game itself. Uh, World of Warcraft, ironically, is actually doing better than almost any of these other games. And the reason why I think it's pretty obvious is because of Classic WoW, and because Retail WoW is a product made for the people who enjoy it. Now, that product might not necessarily be for me as much anymore, but for the people who enjoy it, they're happy. And this is also for the United States. So let's go ahead and look at worldwide. You're right. I actually didn't I didn't check on that. I should have. So we're seeing about the same trend. But, you know, again, like a lot of these games have kind of gone down. Look at the blue. The blue is Hearthstone. Hearthstone has gone down massively. Like let's get a little bit uh let's look at the past 5 years. We'll see if there's still a, a Jesus, it's so low. I'm going to take Diablo off of this because it's just it it fucks up the other ones, okay? Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So, if you look, like, I mean, obviously it's just th these these graphs are going down. 
Like, besides, wow, it's going down. So if you... And it's not going down that... It's not that bad, right? It's really not. But um, at the same time... Fuck. I mean, I, it's not surprise fizzling out. Yeah, it is. Like, these games are on life support. It's like all of these games are on life support. Now show Power World. Well, we can look at a million different games, but my point is, besides this, that all of these different games are not really doing very well. And this is an observable trend that I'm seeing. Now, am I wrong about this trend? Am I misinterpreting this data? Maybe I am in some way, but this is something I'm not aware of. Like, you know, so tell me if there's a way I'm wrong, because I have no fucking idea. Innovate or fade to dust? Yeah. And so, uh, this is what happens. It reads as alarming, but the reality is it's inevitable in these scenarios. I've been part of several company buyouts and mergers, and there's always redundancy and duplication between roles that results in layoffs. Yeah, but Adam and Adam and Yabar were not redundant roles, though. Yeah, they were. <laughs> They're redundant because Microsoft is going to be in charge now. So why do we need them to be in charge whenever Microsoft is going to be in charge? They're the most redundant. Because, like, you know, there's going to be miscommunications. Like, Microsoft is going to say one thing, they're going to say something else. It's like, okay, that's it, right? And so it makes sense. There's one, Activision and King Game Studio and the Blizzard IPs. The Blizzard Studios suck. Well, act people at Activision were let go as well. Uh, it wasn't just that. Google Trends only represent searching and browser result. It doesn't mean the state of the player base. You're right about that, but I bet there's a trend between interest in a game and players playing the game. I bet there is. I've got a crazy fucking notion in my mind that I think that there's a correlation there. But you are correct that it's not one-to-one. -one. You're very correct about that. Uh, anyway, let's go back. We're going to read some more posts that people have made about this. Uh, let's see if I can find it. And uh, fucking hell, Microsoft laying off uh, 1,900 Activision Blizzard Xbox employees. There it is. Oh, there it goes WoW. I think WoW is probably going to be the only ones that isn't removed. Um, uh, in the memo of the cancellation of survival game, it was framed as a redeploying of resources. From the perspective of someone on that team, that seems like the entire team is being laid off. So this is a person who was working at the Blizzard survival game. The entire survival team just got laid off. I'll be radio silent while I sort out and feel my emotions before I find out what's next. I loved working on the project with my team. It's one of the best things I ever did with my career. I'm only sorry no one will get to see it. And you can imagine, like, how disappointing and sad that is, right? You invest five years of your life, three years of your life into something, and it's like, yeah, I really worked so hard on this. Can I see it? No, because it doesn't exist. I mean, fuck. Jason Schreier wrote an article about the game. So this is exactly what he said, and um, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll read it here. Uh, Blizzard boss Mikey Barr is out. Adam Hadam is a uh, company's founder, uh, is leaving the company. Odyssey, the survival game, been in development for six years, is canceled. People at the impacted companies tell me that as of right now, they don't know who are losing their jobs. That's right. It is the Thanos snap for pretty much every single one of these game companies. Uh, Bloomberg story will be updated as we learn more. Microsoft's Matt Booty. Good one. Um, said in a note that Yabara chose to leave his position as president of Blizzard, but in November of BlizzCon, Yabara told me that he wanted to stay for the long haul. Someone will drag me out of Blizzard, Mike Yabara said. That's how long I will be here. Well, yeah, um, I think that's probably what happened metaphorically. And so, yeah. And also, things can change. Obviously, you know, like maybe his, you know, something in his personal life changed him, and that's why he, he left. Uh, there could be a lot of reasons. And so, yeah, we'll see if there's any more updates here, and I'll take a look at it. Uh, any updates? Ooh, so the paragraph and timing of current earnings. Okay. Uh, no, we're not. We're not really seeing any updates yet. Microsoft cancels new Blizzard video game, and this is about the game here. And uh, we can talk about and and they they said that they canceled. By the way, the the game Odyssey, which was the uh, the survival game. They said they canceled it as part of a focus on projects that hold the most promise for future growth. So they basically decided that, um, you know, the survival game just didn't have a lot of growth potential. And I think that they're probably right. I'll be honest, I really, I think they're probably right. Like, 
not not no new IP risk. Yeah, yeah. Here's why I think that they're right. The reason why I think they're right is because the survival genre is a weird middle ground between like indie like Metroidvania small like you know like single slice games and uh, like big triple A games. Like you have a lot of like single A and double A games that are survival games. And those games are so much more agile and they can create content so much faster than a big company like Blizzard can. How can Blizzard possibly operate in that space and be a legitimate competitor? How can they do that? Because I don't know. They're too slow. Yeah, I think they're too slow. And again, we talk about too slow and then people are mentioning Valheim, right? But, um, you know, my point is still the same. Just buy them. That's what they should do. Like, if I was Blizzard, I would try to buy one of these big survival games and then try to manage it and empower the people that are making it to be uh, e even better, right? Take something like V Rising or like a game that's like really, it's a really well-made game, but it just doesn't have like, a, I, I feel like it doesn't have the juice that it deserves to have, right? And so there it is by Left 4 Dead. Yeah, something like that. The marketing, whatever it is. Yeah, they're not the marketing. Yeah, I mean, like, we had the guys on for a, uh, uh, what do you call it, for a, an all craft, right? Back whenever I did that. But um, that was a long time ago. And that's just how it is. Yeah, dark and darker, something like that. They can buy them from Nexon. And so anyway, yeah. And so this is disappointing. Technical issues surrounding the engine or sweet tools technology developers use to construct a game. According to people familiar with the process, Odyssey was originally prototyped on the popular Unreal Engine from Epic Games, but Blizzard executives decided to switch because it wouldn't support their ambitions for vast maps supporting up to 100 players at once. And Blizzard is right. I think that, you know, that's probably the right decision. And also, like, why is it not supporting that? Because I feel like a lot of games are able to. Uh, but I, I don't really know that probably as better as well as they do. Uh, you Synapse, the internal engine, the company had originally developed for mobile games, so it probably had like more of a uh, stylistic vibe to it. And so, yeah, people who played the early version of the game enjoyed it and thought there was a lot of potential in the market for a survival game that hit Blizzard's bar for quality. Well, what would you say Blizzard's bar for quality is? What would that mean? What 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 do you mean by that? Oh, you mean a ground? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there you go. And so that's the problem, is that the quality of the games are not very good. And to be fair, guys, I want to make sure one thing is very clear, that we made jokes about Blizzard quality in Wrath of the Lich King, okay? Like, we have been memeing and shitting on Blizzard for, like, 20 years. But the problem is that now there are Google trends that we could be like, yeah, see? You see, you see that? See, see look, at, look at the graph. It says, see, I, I told you I was right. That's the difference. Yeah, now it's real. It's not a meme anymore. There you go. It's not a meme. Yeah, words drain our quality. Yeah, th that was the beginning, right? And so, uh, yeah, a lot of people lost their job, and it's really sad, and it's also not surprising. The truth is that, I mean, we're seeing, like, Riot did layoffs, what was it, yesterday? No, it was the day before. Riot laid off, was it 500 people? And Activision Blizzard is laying off almost 2,000. The reality is that I think that tech, again, is maturing to a state where... For the longest time with tech, I think that people were just kind of ever-expanding horizons. Like, the, the future kept getting bigger, and the future kept getting bigger, and it got bigger, and it bit bigger. And then after the last five years... I feel like it stopped getting as bigger, as much bigger. It stopped. It, it, it like it what it peaked, yeah, it peaked exactly, and that's not a bad thing. It's not, but it's just the reality. And so, what happened to all to open AI? Well, that's a different type of technology, and that's why everybody's trying to invest into it. So you're seeing these companies that were hiring for these continuous 20 percent year over year growth, uh, you know, growths and revenue and like profit and everything, and guess what happens? Huh. Well, that stops happening, and then all of those people that they built for having a ship that's going to be twenty percent bigger, you know, five years in a row, so that's like two hundred and what sixty percent or something like that, or one hundred and sixty percent, way way bigger. Well, guess what happens? 
Well, you don't need all those people. We need to look at the categories of people that are being laid off. Yeah. They had it coming and they deserve it for all these years of bad content. The market decides what people deserve. They decide what people are worth for better or for worse. I made that very clear with the AI stuff, and I made that very clear with my defense of the Prince of Persia game. I thought it was a great game, and I disliked the idea that people said that it was cheap because it followed the paradigm that many indie games use, which is the Metroidvania paradigm. I thought people were being very unfair. But at the end of the day, does my opinion matter? No. Because nobody bought the game. And whenever I say nobody... I don't mean nobody. A lot of people bought the game. And the sad thing about it is all of the people who I talked to... Actually, I didn't really talk to anybody about the game. I just read people's posts about it. Everybody who talked about the game that I saw said it was good. So it's like, oh, this sucks, right? It's like, okay, well, everybody who I'm talking to and I see is saying the game's good. And it's like, fuck, man. But then the, the public just doesn't... The public says, no, bad. But it's good, bad. But look at it's bad. Well, but look at it, it's got a good game. No, bad game. Look, look, you see mobile game, mobile game, it's mobile game. Bad. It's bad. Don't want it. Too much money. But you said you wanted games that weren't as big. No, bad, bad, bad game, bad game. Too small. Too small, small game, bad game. Bad. And does it really matter what my opinion is? No. It doesn't. Because the market decides, not me. And I'm... It's sad. It really is sad. The shutdown of Overwatch week? Oh, I forgot all about this. Why didn't I talk about this? Uh, Overwatch League canceled. Um, okay. So, we've got one right here. Give me one second. And uh, how much overhead in terms of management do you think there is for Blizzard? I I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. And uh, thank you, Overwatch League. Um, I, I don't want to read the whole thing. Uh, officially over as teams vote for exit, right? So, basically, Overwatch League is done. They completely canceled it. It's gone. It's done. Canceled, done, finished, deleted, yeeted. And this came out two or three days ago. I I, uh, I I missed out on it, but there it is. Now, why did Overwatch League die? I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody watched it. That's the reason. Nobody watched the show. It wasn't making any money. And so they canceled the league. It's really not that complicated. It's because of money, right? It's because of money. But why is it because of money? It's because of money because nobody watches the show. Because you can't get anybody to give you money if nobody looks at the advertisements that they gave you money to have people look at. Just... Oh, I, bro, I'm sure I'm going to get a hate thread about that one, too. And uh, anyway, so yeah, a lot of people are mad about this. Too much emphasis on making it IRL sports. Yeah, but that's, I actually, I think that that is a, that is a reason why it was stupid, but Overwatch League was successful despite that. Why was it successful despite that? Because people watched it. And, and, oh, we're going to go even farther. Why did people watch it? Because people played it. And that's what changed, isn't it? That's what happened. So people stopped playing the game. So people stopped being interested in the game. So people stopped watching the game because they're not keeping up with the metas. And then because nobody's watching the game, the, met, the, the company can't make any money with it, right? They were engaged with the game. It was because of XQC. XQC was a very popular, really big player, but Overwatch League was massive. And it was part of many different people. Obviously, like, now, XQC is one of the most popular people, but I remember whenever XQC got kicked out of Overwatch League. I remember the day that it happened. And he, he fucking had on, he, he had his stream, it was like this, he was sitting in his old room, and it was whenever he told somebody to suck a dick or something like that, and they kicked him out, and he had, like, four or seven K viewers. Because I watched the stream myself live. It was a really big deal, but he wasn't the only big name in Overwatch. 
especially not then. He's pr by far the biggest now, but back then that wasn't the case. I was there. No, let's go see. Yeah, and he would just play. Yeah, it was a big stream at the time too. Yeah, that was his biggest stream. That's the thing. It's like this drama, and I was. I remember thinking to myself like, bro, like he's doing it right. You know, like he's doing it right. He's farming it. And it's like, because I was thinking, oh, man, like, you know, this is going to, like, maybe fuck up his career or something. And then, like, he immediately fucking goes live and starts farming it, bro. And people are subbing, like, fucking crazy supporting him. They're like, yeah, bro, that guy doesn't, bro, the whole Overwatch League sucks dick, man. Like, what do you mean? It's not just him. They all do. And so, yeah, he farmed the drama. Exactly. And, and I was like, yeah, that's the right thing to do. And so, uh, anyway... So I remember I defended him. I thought that the, the way that people were characterizing him was just absolutely, totally fucking unfair, right? And so anyway, uh, you know, that's Overwatch League was really big. Obviously, it had big names in it. Of course, it had big names in it. But why did it have the big names? It had the big names because people liked watching the game. And so they're looking for people that are good at the game to watch. And so it's a symbiotic relationship. It's the same reason why nowadays there are no really big retail WoW PvP streamers. Do you know why? Because nobody gives a fuck about Retail WoW. Back in the day, Wreckful and Mitch were fucking massive. Now, were they massive because they were entertaining? Sure they are. But you know who else is entertaining? Peekaboo and Zaryu. They're really entertaining. They're great. But guess what happens? There's not the audience there to support them and turn them into 20k streamers like, in my opinion, they deserve. So that's what I think. It's about an ecosystem. That's why Zara went full classic. It is. I remember getting farmed by Zaryu all the time in RBGs. I remember if I saw him in the other team, I was like, oh, fuck. You know, because he had like the he always had the best teams. It was crazy. Peekaboo doing his play by plays, he shits on kids is one of the funniest things ever. Yes, and he's such a skilled player. It's like if people were able to recognize that skill for what it truly is. Like I I wish because like the problem with WoW players is that. Somebody like Peekaboo or Zico or Venruki or Zaryu, they are so good, you don't even know how good they are. Like, you have no fucking idea how good these guys are at the game. And because of that, nobody can really even appreciate it. You forgot Sony. Sony's insane, too. He is. Waz. Yeah, Waz, too. Waz does have a big ego, but he's a great player. It's good to have people with big egos. It makes it entertaining. Remember Idra? That's who I remember from StarCraft 2. Idra and Destiny. <laughs> like, I don't remember a lot of the other people. Because they weren't entertaining. You know, fake it. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And so Idra was so salty. He was. And we all remember that, right? We all remember that. We think back and we smile. It's fucking funny, right? Because again, like, I I'm so sick, bro. Anytime that, like, some, like, there's, like, a Valorant game and somebody gets teabagged and they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, we can't have that. I mean, this is a serious broadcast. Like, bitch, shut the fuck. It's a video game. Shut the fuck up. Let's have, some little, have a little bit of fun. But that. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, jeez, it's so annoying. <clears throat> Train wrecks, RBGs? Bro. Yes. Oh, my God. That was so good. Do you remember that one time that Train, we queued up against ABN, and I unmuted after we decided the strategy, and because I, I had talked to Train while we were muted, and he was like, okay, unmute. I'm going to say that we're going to DDoS ABN. And he un and I unmute. And we do this as a joke, right? And he uh, he de he's like, yeah, okay, so we're going to take him. We're going to hit him offline after the second card. And then I'm like, okay, all right, for sure, man. All right, I'm going to unmute now. Right? And then we just played it off like it was nothing. And like after a week, everybody just assumed that it wasn't a joke. They were like, bro, he's a trains a DDoSer. He literally admitted to it on stream. Didn't you see Asmund's stream? Nobody ever fucking thought that. Like, they never thought it wasn't a joke. 